I don't want to take too much time for our, from our speaker, but I do want to frame up um, why we went through the effort on a very, very limited budget to bring somebody all the way from Guatemala. <laughs> and um, I think the best way to do that is actually kind of uh, tell you just a little bit about my relationship with Norma Cruz. And um, I've worked and traveled in Guatemala now for 20 years, which put me as a very young woman, my first trip in actually during the Civil War years. The Civil War years is the longest uh, Civil War in the Americas, 30 years, which is just profound, profound, three decades. And um, that, that experience, um, going into a war-torn country in my early 20s was obviously, it, it taught me a lot. And then I always say the people of Guatemala have taught me the most important lessons in my life. Um, and in more recent years, about 2009, I was volunteering um, with the Guatemala Human Rights Commission and we were taking testimony uh, from women about their surviving uh, violence. And we were actually taking testimony also from some of their families because the women um, had died from what we call femicide now. Um, and that's the killing of women simply to kill women and to grip control on a society to f spread fear and terror so that women are not allowed by their families to continue to walk in the streets to go to school or to go to their jobs. It controls a society and two women a day die as a result of femicide in Guatemala right now. Two women will die today. Enormous Foundation, Survivors Foundation, will probably be one of the best first responders because the police in Guatemala simply do not investigate. Um, that is, they just show up and make sure the body is disposed of. They don't take the forensic evidence, essentially. It's, it's getting better because Norma's putting so much pressure on. So that being the case, I was taking um, testimony from survivors as well as women themselves, I mean their families. And I had for years been told, you've got to meet Norma. Well, first off, you notice Norma gets called by her first name and people know who she is. That tells you something about her influence in the society when someone gets just simply called their first name and everybody knows who that is. Norma is probably, arguably, the most influential private citizen in the country. There probably is at least one or two other women who are also exceptionally um, Influential Rigoberta Menchu uh, won a Nobel Peace Prize, for instance, and Rigoberta Menchu is also quite often just simply called Rigoberta. Um, and uh, so I kept saying, no, I don't need to meet Norma. Norma's a busy woman. I will not meet Norma Cruz until I need to meet Norma because we're working on something. That means I may not ever meet her, you know, and it's okay because she's busy and I don't need to meet her as a celebrity, basically. Well. I did meet Norma because we, we took testimony basically from some of the people who work in her organization, including uh, her whole team of lawyers who go to courts and accompany women and make sure things are done well, demanding justice. But I also met Norma's daughter who is a survivor of violence and took her testimony. But we still, I still didn't meet Norma. But Norma started to put two or two together. Somehow we got in the same room to discuss um, the women who had experienced violence in the way of having their children stolen, abducted, kidnapped. And in that process, because that is now in my area, which is um, the forced fraud and coercion and the adoption practices in Guatemala, but also elsewhere, um, I said to Nora, what can I do for you? Oh boy, that was a moment, because I had no idea in 2009, I'd be standing here because this is my third trip with Norma, with me making the introduction, and which has been a, an amazing thing because Norma is so much fun, frankly. You know, somebody who deals with femicide is fun. That says something about who Norma is because she can really keep it light while being very serious at times. But um, we've, I've been with Norma, and I consider it still this is accompaniment work. It's accompaniment work for somebody who is at a celebrity status, but this is the same work that Norma does for women who go to court. She accompanies, and she witnesses so that people, she, the judges know. There's people there witnessing this. If you don't do this right, we're going to tell people, and we're going to take this to the press. And Norma says this regularly. I will take this to the press. I will go, I'll march into the Supreme Court. I will go to the president's office tomorrow, and she does. And they don't say no when Norma says, I need to talk to so-and-so at this point, which is wonderful. Um, and part of that is because Norma has now won awards. You know, she has access now. Um, you know, 
a Nobel Peace Prize nominee. Okay, she was not awarded that. We've already had one Guatemalan woman, and there is a certain amount of we can't be doing this twice, probably. She has a, won a Women's of Courage Award from the Obama administration, meeting Hillary Clinton and Michelle Obama. She has gained access now. And for Norma, those awards are about access. And so being a part of this as a process is now she, she gained some access to this environment and has been meeting with some people here, even in The Hague, you know, meeting with the Guatemalan uh, people here, the ambassador, et cetera, are, are in our vicinity, I know, meeting with the other Guatemalans. So I'm going to turn this over to you because you're going to, to some degree, witness what she has to say about what happened in Guatemala, but also I asked her to talk a little bit about the surrogacy piece, too, to kind of pull these things together. So on that, I'm going to introduce you simply my friend and colleague, Norma. Tengan todos muy buenos días, todos y todas. If everyone, uh, good morning. Este, yo no me pongo acá porque si no ya no me miran. <laughs> I don't stand up here because you can't see me. <laughs> sí. Bueno, yo eh, quiero compartirles la mañana de hoy porque Guatemala sabe que yo estoy acá y me decía, eh, me decían, por favor, no cuentes solo las cosas tristes de Guatemala, cuenta las cosas positivas de Guatemala. Bueno. I'm standing here this morning because uh, my people have asked me to share with you not just uh, the sad stories, but also the positive stories. Y el día de hoy, pues yo quiero compartirles algunas reflexiones eh, de la experiencia de mi país en los últimos siete, ocho años. And we, today I would like to share the experiences of uh, the people of Guatemala in the last eight to ten years. Eh, ¿cómo, eh, ¿Cómo, como país, eh, sobrevivimos a una realidad muy dura que que, que hemos estado viviendo. How we have survived the reality that is very hard, um, a reality that we have lived all this time. Tanto las mujeres como el, el sector niñez en Guatemala. Especially women and, uh, and children in Guatemala. Y es que no partamos y no olvidemos que Guatemala es un país latinoamericano con una gran carga machista, racista y clasista. Let's not remember that we are a country in Latin America with a heavy environment, cultural environment of machism, um, racism and classism. Y esto es importante tenerlo presente porque eso tiene que ver mucho en cómo se ve a la mujer como se ve a los niños. And this is very important because it determines how uh, women and children are viewed. Porque si a la mujer se le ve como un objeto y no como un ser humano en vestido de derechos, podemos hacer de ella lo que queramos. Because if we see women as an object, and uh, not a person who is invested with rights, then we can do with her anything we want. Entonces, vemos que Guatemala hoy encabeza el segundo lugar en el mundo de mayor violencia contra la mujer. 700 mujeres asesinadas al año por ser mujeres. So we see that Guatemala is in the second place of the number of homicides, femicide, feminicides that have been committed, or homicides against women that have been committed, 700 of them yearly. Y sumada, sumada a esa realidad, este, nos vimos envueltos en una dinámica de que a esas mujeres 
no solo se les arrancaba la vida, no solo se les arrancaba el ser dueñas de su cuerpo, sino que también se les arrancaban a sus hijos el derecho a ser madres. So we experienced that women were not just, uh, their life was not being taken away, but also that their um, children was being taken, their children were taken away. En dos momentos de la historia de Guatemala, uno durante la guerra, en donde murieron muchas mujeres eh, en medio de la guerra, y luego durante los tiempos de paz. Hoy en mi país es, estamos en tiempos de paz, deberíamos de estar construyendo la paz. So I will talk about uh, what we learned since the war, where many women actually died, and uh, the transition into the times of peace that we should actually be experiencing at this point. Este, yo siempre digo que, que Guatemala y sus mujeres y las mujeres de mi país son personas heroicas, heroínas porque sobrevivieron a 36 años de guerra, han sobrevi sobrevivido a un sistema patriarcal y día a día tienen que enfrentar la sobrevivencia por el hecho de ser mujeres. So in Guatemala, we have to honor women as heroines, as uh, heroes in a way to uh, the 36 years old war that uh, they lived Um, as well as the atrocities of the patriarchal system. It's so, a struggle that every day um, they face in a struggle for survival. Entonces, hemos, hemos, eh, hemos querido ir haciendo el ejercicio de, de aprender de nuestra historia, de sacar enseñanzas de nuestra historia. So we have uh, done an exercise to actually learn from our history and to draw lessons from that history. Entonces nosotras eh, nos enfrentamos en el 2006 a la dinámica de la, de la adopción irregular, no de uno de dos niños, sino que de cientos de niños, y eso empezó a llamar la atención de la sociedad guatemalteca. So in, we started in 2006 when the irregular adoptions started and uh, we're not only um, the disappearance and the kidnapping and, and abduction of one to two ch children was taking place, but also of hundreds of, ch of children. Este, yo tenía, un, tenía ya varios años de venir acompañando a, mu a familiares de mujeres asesinadas y me había encontrado con casos de mujeres que presentaban cesárea en sus cuerpos. So I was accompanying families during that time um, who had been assassinated, um, but uh, we were noticing also that some of them were actually a, a, have a performed cesarean on their bodies. Y eh, con evidencia de, de que había, o sea, había evidencia de que habían estado entre los siete y ocho meses de gestación. With evidence that they have lived um, a seven to eight months of gestation. Pero no encontrábamos al, no encontrábamos al bebé. No se, no se miraba, no, 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 qué había pasado con el bebé. But we were unable to locate where the child was. Y las investigaciones nos llevaron a establecer y después encontramos a una mujer que había sobrevivido, que le habían sacado a su bebé de siete meses a través de una cesárea para venderla en adopción. So then we found a woman who had been killed and a cesarean had been performed on her uh, when she was seven months of pregnancy and we learned that the child had been sold. 
Nosotros dijimos, es, eh, no sabíamos cómo llamarle a eso, no no, no sabíamos, nosotras empezamos, empezaron a llegar mujeres a la fundación a decir ayúnenos porque me arrebataron a mi niña cuando yo iba en la calle. So we didn't know how to call that. All what I knew, is, we knew is that, uh, that women have been uh, uh, seized or detained uh, by kidnappers, I guess, in, uh, uh, when she was walking in the street. Y nosotras empezamos a decir, bueno, este, la fundación fue creada para acompañar a mujeres víctimas de violencia. Y empezamos a lo interno una reflexión a decir, este, ¿qué tipo de violencia es esta? ¿Cómo le podemos llamar a esta violencia? So we begin to understand that uh, the mission of the um, the Survivors Foundation was actually to accompany this woman, to accompany the process of, of uh, a, uh, to accompany them while their rights have been violated. And uh, so our, our mission was violence, uh, to work on violence against women. And that that was the purpose of being created. Entonces nosotros establecimos que efectivamente era, era otro tipo de violencia, no la violaban, no la golpeaban, no la mataban, pero le estaban quitando el derecho a ser madres, a ver crecer a sus hijos, les estaban quitando el fruto de su vientre. So we understand that this was no less than uh, another form of violence against women. And uh, because uh, she had not, the women were not being killed necessarily, um, and, uh, but they were taking away the right to be mothers. Y entonces se nos juntaba el pasado con el presente. En Guatemala durante la guerra hubieron 45 mil desaparecidos. Y empezamos a ver que en esta nueva etapa de nuestra vida democrática, estaba presente la desaparición, o sea, en el momento que robaban a la criatura, las familias, las mamás empezaban a buscar en todos lados a esa criatura. So we understood that we, in a way we were linking the past with the present, because during the past we had 45,000 disappearing um, in uh, desaparecidos, and uh, a new phase under supposedly some democracy involved uh, the disappearance also of, 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 of uh, children, where families were looking for them. Then empezamos nuevamente, poníamos cientos de habeas corpus, este, de recursos de exhibición personal para entrar a, a, a orfanatos, para entrar a casas cunas, entrar a, a, a buscar a, e, a esas criaturas, eran cientos, pasábamos la noche buscando a esas criaturas. So we submitted hundreds of habeas corpus, which is a legal recourse in Guatemala, to be able to access the orphanages and uh, go with the families to look for those children. Entonces empezamos a regresar la mirada y a decir cuán, cuándo empezó esto en Guatemala y detectamos que había empezado en el tiempo, en el 2008, en, en, en 1983 con el gobierno de Ríos Montt, cuando se dieron las masacres en las comunidades indígenas. So we begin to understand that this, this uh, eh, situation actually had started in 1983 under Ríos Montt government, when the people have been disappearing en donde efectivamente había niños que sobrevivían a la matanza, que había que buscarle un hogar, pero también se empezó a generar de que empezaron a ver que los niños valían dinero, dejaban buenos créditos y ya no solo se llevaban a los niños sobrevivientes de masacres, sino que empezaron a robar niños de, de otras comunidades. So we understood that, uh, in during those years and the massacres, there were survivors that were disappearing and children that were disappearing, but also not only the children that were involved in um, or were victims of those massacres, but also children began to be stolen for the purposes of, 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 of money. 
en, desde esa época se empezó a hacer uso de despojar de, de su identidad a ese niño que se robaba, se le despojaba de toda su identidad. So those children that were stolen actually were, uh, their identity was taken away. Algo que a mí me impresionó mucho es ver cómo a las niñas indígenas les quitaban su traje, les cortaban su pelo. Para las mujeres indígenas, su pelo largo, su trenza es algo muy importante. So that uh, we found that uh, eh, to the indigenous, eh, they were actually, the indigenous people, women, have been, eh, they, their dresses were taken away and their hair cut. Um, and this is the typical dresses and the, and the hair which has some, so much meaning in the indigenous culture. Este, se les quitaba su nombre, dejaban de llamarse María, eh, y, 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 se, pa, y pasaban a tener otros nombres. Actually, these were um, the children, and then uh, they they used to call them other names, not uh, Maria y Sept, and then other names were attributed to them. Y entonces ahí empezamos nosotras a investigar y descubrimos que que existía la convención de la Haya. Y que la convención de la Haya, en su esencia, en su espíritu, lo que quería era regular y hacer de forma ordenada y de forma embestida de los derechos humanos, buscarle un hogar a aquel niño que no lo tuviera. So we learned that of the existence of the Hay Convention, which in essence was regulated in an orderly manner, um, the rights, um, the human rights of children. And so we begin to understand that that meant to actually provide a home to a child. Una esencia muy noble, muy humana. A very novel and human essence. Pero, no, pero la dejamos a un lado. La, la dejamos a un lado, nos olvidamos de esa esencia, de ese espíritu. Y empezamos... A, a buscar niños para las familias que no tenían. Al revés, le cambiamos el, el espíritu. ¿verdad? So, if the essence, the spirit of the convention was actually to find homes for those children. But instead, what we were doing is to find children for families. So, we were uh, uh, changing the spirit of the convention. Se convirtió en una industria en donde ya habían catálogos hasta por internet y en donde a los niños que se robaban tenían que ser niños que estuvieran 100% sanos para poderlos poner en esos catálogos y la gente seleccionar al niño que quería comprar. So we learned that actually this was becoming an industry where uh, a catalog was created of those children in uh, stolen. And uh, in those children that were stolen were preferred to be healthy. So the families would go through that catalog and select the child that was most healthy. In Guatemala, in base a un estudio oficial de gobierno, se pudo establecer que se le daba trabajo a más de 5,000 personas en mi país empezó a generar una fuente de trabajo. And then we also learned that this industry started to produce uh, jobs in the country. And it was a source of jobs that was employing 5,000 people at least. Pero no, no era trabajo, era corrupción. But it wasn't work, it was corruption. Porque tú empiezas a, a comprar la conciencia del funcionario público y entonces el funcionario público empieza a tratar de encubrir lo que está pasando. It is corruption because uh, it, it changes the conscious of the public servants and then uh, they engage in corruptive activities, uh, not what they are supposed to be doing. Entonces el, el llamado que hace la convención del niño a los estados 
de que el Estado debe ser garante de los derechos del niño, de protegerlo, deja de ser. Y el Estado se vuelve en su propio comerciante. So there is the spirit of uh, the Hague Convention on Intercountry Adoption, which is to protect children, is lost. And uh, if the state becomes then the one who uh, sells, uh, who enters into, into the commercial uh, trade. Entonces, por eso es que nosotros aprendimos y estamos tratando hoy, en esta nueva etapa, con una ley nacional de adopciones, con un ente central de retomar el espíritu de la convención en cualquier parte del mundo que se den las adopciones deben de estar regidas por el espíritu de la convención, darle un hogar a aquel niño que no lo tiene. So that uh, the adoption law, what it is in essence, it's the, it reflects the desire to retake the spirit of the Hague Convention, which is to provide a home to a child that doesn't have it. Y a raíz de ese espíritu de la convención, generar leyes al interior de nuestros países que regulen, que prevengan, que sancionen cuando nos querramos ir por otro lado. So that the spirit is for countries eh, to actually, add, eh, eh, to signatories countries and ratifying, uh, to adopt laws that will regulate, prevent, and prosecute um, those involved in trafficking. That's the spirit that we need to reclaim. No perder de vista que tenemos que armonizar las diferentes convenciones de Naciones Unidas porque en el tema de, de la adopción o de otras formas, como, como las nuevas formas que hoy se están dando de las madres sub, subrogadas, este, eh, entran a jugar un papel otros actores, no solo el niño. So that uh, our purpose is now to harmonize y this convention with other conventions, y, including those of the UN, because we're facing new forms of exploitation in the, uh, new forms of what is happening and uh, including uh, the situation faced by the sugared mothers. Porque la convención del niño tiene que estar reflejada cuando le demos vida a una ley de adopciones o, 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 o similar. Tiene que estar reflejada también la convención contra la erradicación de toda forma de violencia contra las mujeres. No podemos andar nosotros condenando la violencia física, psicológica, patrimonial y sexual contra las mujeres, pero al mismo tiempo estarlas violentando de otra forma, no podemos. Entonces debemos de armonizar todas esas convenciones. Because we cannot be attending the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the new adoption laws and continue to be violating women. And so we need to be observant also on the convention, convention related to violence against women uh, because we cannot do um, any harm uh, really or observe these other laws and continue to do harm to women. Porque en el, en el fondo, en la esencia, estamos también instrumentalizando el cuerpo de la mujer. Lo estamos haciendo, lo estamos viendo nada más en función de generar una vida para, para satisfacer en determinado momento las necesidades de, de otros. Pero tenemos que cuidar de de no ver a la mujer únicamente como, como reproductora de vida, sino verla en su integridad. Because in essence, what we're doing would be through the, uh, this new type of industry is to inter instrumentalize um, the bodies of women uh, only as generators of new life to satisfy the needs of others, not as complete human beings. 
Tenemos que desarrollar la capacidad de diálogo a lo interno de nuestros países. ¿Qué está pasando? ¿Qué estamos haciendo? ¿Qué, está, ¿Qué estamos haciendo bien, pero también qué estamos haciendo mal? ¿Y cómo podemos superar lo que esté mal? So we have to be reflected about what we have done well, but also have to be reflective about what we have not done well. Tenemos que escuchar los puntos de vista de todos. We have to listen to the points of view of um, others and everyone. Porque en el caso de Guatemala no fue decir no a las adopciones, sino que fue escuchar a todos y decir vamos a tener adopciones nacionales e internacionales pero reguladas y vamos a darle un hogar a aquel niño que no tiene un hogar y vamos a privilegiar a los niños especiales les vamos a dar la prioridad, no fue decir, no van a ver, no, vamos a hacerlo, pero de una manera distinta. ¿verdad? So, in the case of uh, inter-country adoptions and adoptions, we said, we didn't, it's not that we said no to adoptions, both national and inter-country, um, because the purpose was to provide a home to a child. We focus more on children with special needs, And so what we were doing actually is making things differently. Entonces, hablemos, platiquemos y encontremos solución a eso, a, a cómo ponernos de acuerdo. So that uh, we needed to come together to talk and uh, get in agreement on what to do. Este otro elemento que nosotros aprendimos de estas, de estas experiencias es que tenemos que prevenir, no tenemos que actuar cuando ya el problema se nos fue de las manos. So what the focus should be on preventing and, uh, and not uh, being able to do anything when the problem has gone from our hands. Y que las leyes, y por eso es importante estos espacios, porque uno conoce otras realidades, otras experiencias, y eso le permite a uno este, eh, incluso prepararse para las cosas nuevas que puedan, que puedan venir en el futuro. So that's why it's important this type of spaces of dialogue, because we're able to expose ourselves to new realities, to new experiences, and to begin to um, do things in a new way. ¿Verdad? Nosotros allá también, este año tuvimos el primer caso de una madre surro, surro, me cuesta surrogada. repetir, surrogada. Tuvimos el primer caso y no sabíamos cómo se llamaba ese fenómeno, no sabíamos. Hoy vine a aprenderlo acá, así que muchas gracias, porque hoy vine a aprender algo nuevo acá. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we had um, just a few weeks ago the first case of surrogacy and we didn't really even know what to call it. So I really thank you for allowing me to understand how to call it. Y eso va a generar una nueva discusión en, en mi país, ¿verdad? Porque allá el, más del 50% de la población es indígena, es de raíces mayas, ¿verdad? Y para los mayas, los pueblos indígenas, los niños son sumamente importantes, la maternidad es sumamente importante. So, This would allow us to engage in a new discussion in Guatemala, because as you know, the, there is a large indigenous people community, eh, and uh, eh, because for the indigenous peoples, actually, um, maternity is, is, very, is very important. Porque ese es otro aspecto que hay que tomar en cuenta, la, 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 vis, la visión, nosotros le llamamos la cosmovisión, que como pueblo podamos tener sobre ciertos temas. Y uno de estos es precisamente la maternidad, es precisamente es, eh, eh, cómo concebimos el, el tema este de la maternidad para no entrar en conflicto en nuestras comunidades. So part of the cosmovision of people, in particular indigenous people, is how they view maternity. And so we need to take into consideration that in order to, um, to be able to engage in this dialogue. Yeah. 
Entonces, eh, les quiero compartir algunas imágenes, de, 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 porque miren, la historia de los pueblos la construimos las personas. Y yo les quiero decir que este angelito que se llama Angelis, Angelis Rodríguez, junto con la lucha de su madre y, y la lucha de otras madres, cambiaron la realidad de mi país. Because uh, the history is made by person, we need to understand that. Um, I like to share that uh, in some particular cases, this uh, little angel that you have there is Angelina. The struggle of her mother actually has changed history in Guatemala. Fueron estos casos los que descubrieron la realidad que estaba, que estaba dándose y permitieron des desarticular esas estructuras que, que que en determinado momento pasaron a ser estructuras de crimen organizado. So, these cases, in particular this one, helped to understand what was the reality lived in Guatemala because it opened up to the uh, under, uh, understanding and knowledge of the criminal networks that were operating in that country. En base a estos casos se dio vida a la ley de adopciones, a la ley contra la trata de persona, se dio vida a un sistema de alerta temprana como la alerta Amber en Estados Unidos para la búsqueda inmediata de los niños cuando, cuando son robados. Because cases such as this one actually gave birth to uh, the new adoption law to the law that is combating human trafficking, as well as the Alba Kenneth Alert, which is similar to the Amber Alert in the US. Esta es la alerta Amber. Eh, estos dos niños, él es, ay, perdón, él es Kenneth, él es, ella es Salva. Ambos fueron asesinados en, 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 en esa dinámica del, del, del robo de niños, Kenneth con fines de adopción y Alba con fines de explotación sexual. So, those are uh, Kenneth and Alba, and uh, they were um, uh, disappeared actually. Um, Kenneth with the purpose of uh, intercountry adoption, and then Alba with the purpose of, of, of sexual exploitation. And they are the ones who gave birth to the idea of this law as well. Si ustedes ven, ahí está el logotipo del gobierno de mi país. As you can see there, there is the logo of the government of Guatemala. Hoy mi gobierno busca a los niños que, que desaparecen en mi país. Now my government actually searches for the children who disappeared in Guatemala. Le devolvimos la responsabilidad a, a mi gobierno de velar por el bienestar de los niños en mi país. So we mm -hmm. return the responsibility to the government to uh, protect the children in Guatemala. Esta, este, ella es María Dolores Pret, una niña que fue robada durante la guerra en el 84. Ella hoy es ciudadana de, de Bélgica y 30 años después, es la primera niña que llega a Guatemala y presenta la denuncia y dice, quiero justicia porque me robaron cuando yo era niña. So, this is María Dolores, Dolores Pratt, a child that was stolen in 1984 during the Civil War. And she was sold into adoption in, in Belgium. She's now a citizen of that country. So, this is the first... Um, that actually comes back to Guatemala and that, come, that was adopted externally, that comes to uh, Guatemala denouncing that she was stolen. This is 30 years after. Y aquí les quiero mostrar, si ustedes ven a Guatemala, está aquí en la puntita, nosotros estamos a escasas horas de Estados Unidos, que es uno de los principales de los principales eh, de, eh, demandantes del tema de los niños. Estamos a muy pocas horas. 
estamos en el patio trasero, así, así decimos allá, somos el patio trasero de Estados Unidos. As you can see in this map, we are, uh, where uh, Karen actually pointed out, we are very close, to, um, very close where the demand comes from. And uh, so we are only hours away. We are in the backyard of where this is, uh, the demand is coming from. Entonces, el primer caso de, de madres subrogada, su, subrogadas se dio precisamente en la zona fronteriza con México. So the first case of the uh, super, surrogate mother, actually surrogate mother, was in the border of Guatemala with Mexico. En donde no hay estado porque el estado es más débil por la gran presencia de traficantes de personas y de narcotraficantes. Where the state actually, or the government is actually very weak because it is, the, it is an area where there's a lot of human trafficking. Entonces, drug trafficking. Ajá. Entonces, de alguna manera, digamos, este primer caso que se dio nos pone alertas de las nuevas modalidades que se puedan empezar a dar en mi país. So bueno. this first case actually uh, um, warn us of the new modalities that are taking place in our country. Porque nosotros no lo vemos como, como una fuente de ingresos positiva, sino que la vemos como una fuente de ingresos que en esencia, que en el fondo lo que tiene es comercializar a un ser humano. Y esa parte, eh, eh, nosotros sí, este no... Culturalmente no aceptamos, nos cuesta mucho aceptar la comercialización de un ser humano. Bueno. Because in essence, this is not a new source of, 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 of income for the country. In essence, this is a source of exploitation for human beings, eh, which is contrary to our culture. Entonces, un poco esto fue lo que nosotros aprendimos. Este, hoy tenemos una institucionalidad tenemos un marco legal, eh, les quiero compartir que hoy ya no se pueden robar niños en Guatemala, en menos de 24 horas estamos localizando con éxito a los niños que son robados y poniendo en la cárcel a quienes se los robaron. So this is what we have learned. Now in the country we don't have a, a children that have been stolen without any search and in 24 hours we're actually locating them and putting those who are responsible for a, a, the child being stolen in 24 hours and, and putting them in jail. Y todos, los que se, y todos los que participaron, incluyendo funcionarios de gobierno en la comercialización de niños, fueron, están siendo puestos ante la justicia para responder por ese de, por el delito que cometieron. And everyone who is involved in uh, in in that child being stolen actually it's been put it's been prosecuted and put in jail. Entonces les agradezco mucho esta es la experiencia de mi país. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. This is the experience of my country. Uh, buenas, Norma, muchas gracias por su presentación. Uh, tengo unas preguntas para clarificar un poco mi mente lo que usted ha contado. Es decir, todos los papeles de los niños que fueron al extranjero uh, fueron falsos, me imagino. Entonces, había dicho en los papeles que fueron abandonados estos niños. Y también me pregunto, ¿qué pasa con los niños como María Dolores que han vuelto a Guatemala y, y han dicho que, que quiere justicia? ¿Qué pasa con eso? ¿Qué? Um, can you repeat it in English? Yes, of course. I asked uh, Norma, um, uh, what was on the papers of the children who go abroad? Uh, uh, I, I imagine they were false and uh, what was written on their papers if they were... 
um, abandoned. And what happens with the children who go back to Guatemala, like Maria Dolores, the girl on the screen, uh, and say that uh, they want justice? Efectivamente ha sido eh, bien, bien fuerte porque al, al, ser, al no ser verdadera la partida de nacimiento, o sea la constancia de que tú naciste y tu padre y tu madre son fulanos de tal, eh, todo eso se tuvo que anular. En el caso de Angelí es el primer caso en donde se anula la partida de nacimiento, se anula el pasaporte, se anula la escritura de adopción y se le devuelve su identidad. Ella fue adoptada con el nombre de Karen Abigail García, hoy es Karen, Ab hoy es Karen Abigail Monahan y su verdadero nombre era eh, Angeli Rodríguez. El Estado guatemalteco, a través del sistema de justicia, le devuelve su identidad anula la falsa identidad, entonces la, la niña que hoy está en Estados Unidos legalmente no existe, nunca existió y, y pues Estados Unidos tendrá que ver qué hace con eso, ¿verdad? Pero, pero les estamos devolviendo su identidad a esas criaturas que fueron despojadas de ella. Y lo, así como Dolores, la semana pasada, So, um, for the first time, then, uh, we, we proceed with the false uh, birth uh, um, certificate and false birth certificates. We proceed with the nullification of those birth certificates. And uh, in the case of Angeli, for example, uh, what happened is that we were able to um, nullify, actually, the birth certificate, the passport, the adoption is a certificate as well, as a way of reclaiming their identity. And uh, she was Karen Abigail Garcia, and then later adopted and changed the name to Karen Abigail Mo uh, Monahan, uh, but her birth name is Angeli Rodriguez. And uh, so, in a way, by doing this, um, we, um, it, the girl is able to reclaim her identity. At this point then, uh, she is uh, a non-existent child in the U.S. and uh, the U.S. will have to figure out what to do with that. En el caso de, de María Dolores, en la semana pasada fue detenida la mujer que la robó hace, hace 28 años. Fue detenida la mujer Hoy está guardando prisión y va a ser puesta ante la justicia por el delito de plagio y secuestro, porque el delito de trata de persona no existía en esa época. Entonces, le esperan 50 años de prisión de acuerdo a la legislación de mi país. So, in the case of María Dolores, the woman, just about a week ago, uh, the woman who... Um, stole her, actually was detained. And this is the woman who stole her 20, 28 years ago. And uh, so she's fixing, fixing jail and, uh, and the charges, uh, because at the time that this happened, actually, uh, the human trafficking law didn't exist. Then we use the, the we, we call on the law of uh, a, a kidnapping and uh, a, a fraud which uh, she will get a sentence of about 50 years. Okay, um, can I ask you a question? Uh, buenos dias, Norma. Um, a very different kind of question. Um, some, uh, some of our, our group have expressed uh, concerns or two, two concerns regarding international standards. Did uh, Okay. Um, and their uh, and their application, and I wonder if um, if you could give your uh, advice, if you like, or opinion in light of uh, Guatemala's experience in the last ten to fifteen years. Um, some people feel that the Hague Convention has institutionalized intercountry adoption in an unwarranted manner, in other words, in an unjustified manner, and that it has set intercountry adoption in stone 
as a, an approved practice. Uh, do you feel that, that the Hague Convention has had that negative effect or do you think it has been a generally positive uh, instrument in, in terms of Guatemala's experience? That's the first one. And the second one is that some people feel that uh, the Hague Convention does not give sufficient importance to the role and opinion and, and support for uh, first families of children. Uh, they feel that it overlooks uh, the rights of first families. Um, given the wider international standards or the wider context of international standards in which the Hague Convention uh, deals with uh, inter-country adoption as such, do you feel that there is an, an argument in favor of modifying in some way the Hague Convention to give more importance to birth families or first families? Thanks. Bueno, yo quiero decirles que, eh, que la convención sí es positiva y sí regula, pero se debe de, pero no se debe de, de alejar uno del… Eh, yo insisto mucho en el espíritu de la convención, porque toda ley tiene un alma y si tú te apartas de eso, eh, se puede dar cualquier cosa. Este, yo sí diría… Yo siempre digo que este tipo de instrumentos no está escrito sobre piedra y que, la, y que hay que irlos renovando y actualizando a las nuevas realidades que se van presentando, porque la realidad no es estática, va cambiando. Y yo creo que ahorita, eh, con el tiempo transcurrido de estar en vigencia la convención, ya es momento de evaluar, de fortalecer lo que esté bien, y de integrar aquellos elementos que quedaron fuera y que de alguna manera la experiencia nos dice que tiene que estar dentro de la convención, como el tema este, el problema que tenemos de los niños robados. Okay. Solo para que tú veas. So, um, the, in overall, the convention has been very positive because it regulates um, e the intercountry adoptions, which is a, a, a necessary measure. But we have to emphasize the spirit of the law, because every law has a soul. And uh, um, it has to be seen as a, an instrument, uh, not set in stone, but uh, because uh, um, there are new realities, um, those instruments need to be renewed, because the realities are changing. And uh, so uh, the, we need to look at a, or assess what uh, the Hague Convention has done into strengthening uh, the parts that have done very well and then to change others because uh, we need to um, uh, uh, go back to the spirit and, uh, in, in, uh, to address issues as, for example, the children stolen. Fíjense que debería de ser regulada para evitar que se vaya de las manos. Porque si eso se va de las manos, porque eso, o sea, lo que pasa que son, eh, son, son realidades que empiezan a generar ingresos en países muy pobres. Y por supuesto que a la mujer le queda algo, pero la mayor riqueza queda en la estructura intermediaria. Entonces se crean estructuras, sin querer se crean estructuras que vienen del país que demanda al país, digamos, que está respondiendo a la demanda, 
y por supuesto que, que se empiezan a crear incluso empresas que tienen ramificaciones. Entonces, de alguna manera, digamos, eh, hay quienes empiezan a lucrar más porque el ingreso es mayor para ellos por la, la, el lugar que ocupan en la cadena y lo que hemos aprendido nosotros es que la, 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 la mamá, la, la mujer, es la que menos beneficios percibe al final. Entonces, se va generando una, una dinámica que si no se controla, puede parar, digamos, siendo, digamos, una dinámica ilegal, a empezar a actuar al margen de la ley. Entonces, hay que regularla. Desde que empieza, hay que regularla para garantizar los derechos de las mujeres, garantizar el derecho de, del niño y garantizar también el derecho de los padres este que han servido, digamos, de quienes, quienes han solicitado, digamos, eh, la fecundidad. Uh -huh. Yes, it has to be regulated because it can get out of hands. The reality is that uh, this kind of activities actually generates an income in, in, in poor countries. But there is a whole chain of uh, intermediaries and in, in a structure that is formed all the way from the country that demands it to the way that, it, that, that in the country that is supplied. And so mothers in this chain are the ones that actually less benefit and uh, in, in, uh, um, from, from all of the district sections. And so it's, if it's not controlled, then it will become legal. So we need to regulate it to be able to defend the rights of women, the children, and uh, in, in, the, um, in, in those who commission. Hoy en mi país es un delito. En, en el marco de la ley que hoy tenemos es un delito, o sea, porque creamos un marco legal como, como, como en el pasado, eh, habían mujeres que, que, que se hacían pasar por madres biológicas, entonces allá se tipificó la suposición de parto, que es la suposición de parto. Es, es simular o, o mentir y decir, bueno, yo tuve un parto, yo di a luz a una criatura, yo tengo un hijo que, que di a luz. Entonces, eso en mi país es un delito. Entonces, hoy con el marco legal que hay, este, no se puede dar esta figura y si se da, eh, van a haber muchas personas que vayan a prisión. Entonces… Eh, Because today, in my country, surrogacy is a crime. And uh, in Guatemala, we have um, one regulation or an, okay, the, the uh, with the human trafficking law, uh, there is one specific um, uh, uh, prohibition uh, that leads to crime, and it's what is called the pretended pregnancy. So if somebody pretends that he has been uh, pregnant uh, of a child that doesn't exist, and then um, a, that, that impinges actually as a form of crime. So the legal framework actually allows for, um, for this kind of things to be criminalized. Sí. También está tipificado como el delito que una madre venda a un hijo. O sea, eh, eh, o sea eso se tipificó como delito porque también así como habían mujeres que les robaban a su niño, habían mujeres que estaban dando a luz para vender a niños. Entonces, eso se tipificó como un delito y hoy una mujer que vende a un niño, este va a parar a la cárcel. Because this kind of, uh, of act, actually, if a woman sells a child, it's, um, it's identified as a crime and she can go to jail. Ahora, como siempre, digamos, las leyes, las leyes están ahí, pero siempre se busca cómo burlar a las leyes. Yo les quiero compartir que hoy en mi país 
se reporta un promedio de 4 mil menores de edad robados al año. El 85% de los niños son rescatados. Pero, o sea, eh, es una práctica, digamos, que, que siguen probando, viendo cómo le pueden hacer para burlar la ley que hoy tenemos, ¿verdad? Eh, hemos aprendido que, que el tema este eh, busca, como mucha, abre como muchas puertas, entonces como sociedad tenemos que estar atentos a, a que no se vuelva a dar esta situación en cualquier forma, ¿verdad? The law is there, and, uh, but people are always trying to find out how to evade it. We have, for example, um, a, about 4,000 children stolen a year, and 85% uh, 85 uh, 85 of, the, 85 of them are rescued because um, they are always looking for a way to evade um, the law. So what we have learned is that uh, there is always new doors that uh, are opening a society. We have to find how to uh, prevent this from happening. Esto nos ha permitido entonces que al no ser, al, al no haber dinero de por medio, la adopción sea realmente darle un hogar a aquel niño que no lo tiene. Entonces se volvió a recuperar esa, esa parte noble de la institución de la, de la adopción, porque no hay dinero de por medio. So what we learn is that if money is in the middle, then the, uh, when money is no longer in the middle, then the spirit of giving a home to a child uh, prevails. And so we need to make sure that that doesn't happen here. Sorry, if we can hold the questions for coffee, we need to, um, to, to end this session. We're already uh, 10 minutes over, so. Um, but thank you very much, Norma, and uh, please come up and ask questions at the front. Um, we do have, um, we do have, in the atrium, we have coffee, and I just wanted to remind people that at 12.30, um, at the very start of lunch, to come, if you can come down to the lobby, uh, we'll do a picture together, okay? So uh, at 12.30, at the end of this session, we'll do a picture. You have an announcement, Marcy. And I just want to remind folks in streams five, four, and two, is that right? That we're meeting in the attic right after coffee now. Okay.